Hi, and welcome back to Wire to Wire with Nola and RECP. I'm Sarah Fellows, Communications Manager, and I'm here once again with President and CEO Greg Lee. Good to see you, Greg. Good to see you too, Sarah. Thanks for joining me again. Um, we are talking today about capital credits uh, because we've just retired some, so we think this is something that uh, our members could really use some additional information about. But before we do that, we're going to start with a safety moment, as we always do. Um, and I wanted to think, I wanted to talk about uh, washing our hands. Now I know that's something we've talked a lot about, especially this year, um, but I think it can become kind of out of easily, uh, something out of our routine. Uh, it's something that we can forget to do. And especially now that, uh, you know, flu season's here and on top of the pandemic, uh, we just need to kind of double down on the, uh, on the hand washing because that's still continues to be and will continue to be going forward one of the best ways that we can keep ourselves healthy. So that's my safety moment. I think that's a great point. Um, I know me personally, I did a very good job of that this spring for a while. Um, right. And you know, you, you do it so much. I felt like I was to the point I was just kind of polishing my skeleton. Um, so <laughs> probably would be good, especially as we transition into the winter months, if everybody remembered to maybe keep some uh, hand moisturizer with them as well. Um, you're going to have the double effect of the dry weather and the increased hand washing. So take care of your skin also. And I tell you, you'll especially feel that when you use hand sanitizer after that. If you're not using lotion, that is going to be a very painful winter. So mm -hmm. that's a great point. All right. So we're talking about capital credits. Um, capital credits is something I didn't know a lot about it before I came into the co-op world because it is fairly particular to cooperatives um, and, and th that kind of business model. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to just kind of do a, a big picture first. Um, just what are capital credits? How does that fit into that co-op business model? Well, capital credits are, I guess, maybe the easiest way to explain them. They're inherent to our business model, <clears throat> and they are a, um, a mechanism by which a not-for-profit organization returns its margins to those who invest capital in its organization. Mm -hmm. So a rough comparison that a lot of people would probably understand fairly well would be that a, a publicly traded company, like on a stock exchange or something like that, um, it returns dividends whenever it has a profit. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we are a not-for-profit organization <laughs> here at Nolin, organized as a cooperative, but we do, from time to time, if things go well, have margins at the end of a year and we take those margins and allocate them back to those who invest capital in our organization which is every member who has service with us right. uh, they invest and infuse capital into our organization by paying their monthly bill um, so we take that margin amount and on a percentage shared basis that is allocated back to them and then at some point in the future, retired to them and they receive a physical check or a bill credit or something like that. And that is, in essence, their capital credit. So you, you said a couple of words uh, there that are maybe not common for people to understand uh, a margin. So uh, in, in essence, a margin is, is what is left after um, projects have been paid for and, and salaries have been paid. So. Um, that's a, one of those terms that people might not have heard a whole lot, uh, what sure. a margin is. Yeah, and I could probably expand on that a little bit. Oh. One important thing that I would like for everyone to remember is that we are a regulated utility and our rates, the amounts that each of our members pay for their bills is something that has to be approved by the Kentucky Public Service Commission. And those rates are approved basically to allow us to do just slightly better than break even for lack of a more in-depth financial analysis. Mm -hmm. um, it is designed to allow us to run our core business operations. The rates should allow us to satisfy uh, our loan covenants with our lenders. Um, and it should afford us adequate cash flow uh, to run our operation. Okay. Now, our rates are heavily dependent on a volume of energy sales, which is heavily dependent on weather patterns. Right. So even though these rates exist, 
in a manner to allow us to do a little bit better than break even. You have ebb and flow year to year based on how well we run our business, obviously, and how lean and effective and efficient we can be, but also on things that are somewhat out of our control, like how much electricity people use. Right. Uh, so there's, there's several factors there that end up concluding in a margin or lack thereof. Very fortunately for us, the last few years, there has been a positive margin, which ends up being good for our entire membership. But it's not a profit. We do not retain it. It is just margin left over capital at the end of the year after all of our debts have been paid and our financial obligations have been met. And that is what results in an allocation back to each member. Well, and that, that was one of the other uh, terms that may not be familiar with to people. So the allocation is kind of an earmarking of that money. And then eventually the retirement comes after that. And that's when you actually get the money back in hand. Yes, so every year that we have a margin a member who received service from us that year, who paid a bill to us, is going to get an allocation of that margin. Now, it's going to be a very small percentage on an individual basis of that margin, but they will get that allocation, meaning that money will be set aside for them, it will be returned to them, retired to them at some point in the future when the financial condition of our organization will allow for it. Okay. So oftentimes what happens is there is a need to, uh, for cash flow purposes, to retain those dollars in the short term, okay. but then at some point in the future, we can actually physically return those. So that is kind of the difference between allocation, earmarking, placeholder, and retirement, which is the physical return of those dollars to the member. And we'll talk in, in just a second about kind of what what years we're focusing on on now and 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 some of what you were talking about there where the allocation happens after or the retirement happens after the allocation but before we do that um some i'm sure like what i would want to know is okay so how much do i get so i i'm allocated a certain percentage of that margin how do you know how much i'm supposed to get versus my neighbor who gets a different retirement check than me mm -hmm. Okay, so try to kind of represent a fairly simplified example here. Each member has a total volume of electricity that they use on an annual basis, which results in a total amount of capital that they contribute to our organization on an annual basis. Okay, so that is important. That energy usage and thus those dollars represent some percentage, albeit a very small percentage, right. of the total dollars we receive for capital investment in our organization. So each member represents a percentage of the capital we receive. And then at the end of a year, we have some amount of margin, hopefully. We have the last few years, which has been great. And the percentage of capital contributed by a member, that percentage is translated to return that portion of the margin back to them. Now, it is a little bit more complex than that, but in general premise, that is how it operates. Uh, that should give everyone a pretty reasonable representation. So, it could be a year where a person pays more, uh, but they get less capital credit allocation in retirement because either their percentage of capital investment in our organization was less or our margin was less, or it could be a year where a member actually pays less and uses less energy over the course of the year, but their capital credit allocation in retirement is a greater value because their percentage basis of our sales was higher and or our margin at the end of the year was higher. So it, it is based on several factors, um, but ultimately anyone who does contribute capital over the course of the year is going to be the beneficiary of that capital credit. So obviously more complicated than, than extremely straightforward, but to say that 
well, I, I will get a little bit different from my neighbor because essentially we, we paid for different amounts of electricity. I mean that, so basically. Yeah, yeah that is, that is a basic back. example that would, that would hold true. Yes. Okay. All right. So we talked about uh, in terms of being allocated and then retiring in different years. Uh, what are the years that uh, we've just just recently, and I, I mentioned this earlier, we just recently retired some capital credits um, from certain years. So what years did we retire that from this this past time? So many of our members will have already gotten a check. Um, mm -hmm. And so this helps to explain kind of where that came from. Uh, but what what years uh, did those come from this time? I'll recap the past two years. We've been real fortunate to be on a heater around here. Uh, so we have retired capital credits for two consecutive years. Uh, in 2019, we retired 1990 and 2018 capital credits. Right. Uh, and this year, something that's actually just happened over the last couple of weeks here in 2020, uh, we are retiring 1991 and 2019 capital credits. Uh, and those have a total uh, cash value to our members, a little over $1.3 million this year. So it's not something that we could commit to doing absolutely every year, but we're trying very hard and working very diligently to be good stewards of the members' capital. And I am hopeful that this is the beginning of a pattern uh, that we could carry forward in the future and continue to do this with some regularity. Great, and you know, we, we talked um, that there, many people will have already gotten their checks. Um, and if, um, if there are some circumstances that someone would need to reach out to Nolan to talk to them about, especially a deceased account holder that would have an estate, uh, that there are some special circumstances that uh, we do have a capital credits coordinator that can help you through that piece of it. But, but by and large, most people will just get a check without having to do anything. Um, yes, it's a, that is. It's, right, it's, a, it's an easy thing. You just kind of, you accept it and cash it and that's great. For most, for most all of our members, uh, as long as we have a valid address on file, which if you are a current member, we definitely should have a valid address on file. Sometimes people move off of service with us uh, and don't update their, their mailing information with, for us. But as long as we have a valid address on file, everyone whose total capital credit retirement value was over $10 this year should receive a physical check. For those less than $10, I believe they're gonna get a bill credit. Um, you don't have to do anything for those things to take place. Uh, there are cases, whether it is a, um, uh, a, a deceased member uh, whose next of kin or estate needs to collect on their capital credits or, you know, something else gets lost in translation with uh, a check being sent to an invalid address, et cetera. There are some complicating factors for a small portion of members or former members, but even in those cases, we are more than happy to work with you and we want you to get this money. Okay. It is rightfully yours. We want you to cash the check and do with it as you please, um, but we will help figure that out for you. If you didn't get one and you thought you should, please call in. We have someone who is dedicated to this being the sole and primary function of their job, uh, and, and she is going to be more than happy to try to help you get this figured out. So we actually are gonna go ahead and, and bring her in because Desiree has been our capital credits coordinator um, for a little over a year now um, and uh, does a great job with that. And she's gonna help explain some of the more kind of fine details um, with capital credits. So um, just wanna thank you for joining me for this first part um, mm -hmm. and I'll turn it over to Desiree. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. And I'm glad you're turning it over to her because I'm running out of talent on what else to say about this. She's gonna be able to give more details than I could. Hello, my name is Desiree Ruick, and I am the Capital Credits Coordinator here at Nolan RECC. Um, Greg did a great job of going over what capital credits are and how we do our allocations each year. So I just wanted to touch on a few questions that I get frequently um, doing capital credits here. Um, as Greg mentioned, it's very, very important to keep you, um, your mailing address updated with us here. If we have a bad address, the post office will send those checks right back to us 
and then we don't have a good address for you, we'll just hold on to those funds until we get a good address. Um, as of this year, we've paid out all the capital credits through 1991, as well as the years 2012, 2018, and 2019. So if you think that you may have received a check and you never got one, you can call our office and update your mailing address really easily. You just call 270-765-6153 and select option number two to speak to one of our customer service representatives and they can get that updated for you really quickly. So by and large, my biggest job as Capital Credits Coordinator is handling the estates for our deceased members. Um, when one of our members passes away, their capital credits that they have allocated can be paid out to their heirs um, and we have a whole process that we can do for that and that's usually what I get most questions about. So what you'll need to provide us whenever you apply for capital credits is a copy of the member's death certificate and a court order naming um, someone over the estate like an, a probate order or a dispense order. Um, you, we just need copies of those. We don't have to have the originals for those. And you just come into our office and apply for that, or we can mail or email it to you if you're not able to come in. Um, if there wasn't a court order, we can also provide affidavits for you to sign for the heirs to apply for those capital credits. Um, and usually in the state of Kentucky, the spouse can typically apply for those capital credits. Um, so you can just contact us and we can tell you exactly what you'll need to provide us with. Um, once you submit that application, it's about six to eight weeks before you receive a check. And that just gives us time for the account to go through the final billing process. And it also gives time for our board of directors to vote to approve those payouts. So we do get a lot of the questions about the state accounts. So if you want to know what you need to provide us, and if you want us to mail you an application or email you an application, you can just call and speak to one of our customer service representatives. Again, you can just call our office, 270-765-6153, and we would be happy to help you with any questions that you have. So I hope that helps, and um, if you have any questions, just feel free to call our office. Thank you.